What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a subscriber Q&A slash comments video. Lots of interesting topics that have come out of the comment section for my recent videos. So I thought we would just chat about a few things, talk about the market generally, the vintage collection. Some people are hitting the collecting wall, so to speak. Uh, are, cons are collectors spending less? And uh, we're going to talk about the Clone Wars 20th Anniversary TVC and then comic book prices and how Star Wars comic books are in free fall. I've got some data points there as well. And will it ever recover? So, uh, as always, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to make more and better videos. My Patreon is patreon.com slash action figure grader in case you're interested in becoming a member and getting 24 hours early access to every video I release. Let's dig into some subscriber comments. First of all, Joe Rice, who, speaking of Patreons, he is a Patreon supporter. So thank you, Joe, for the channel support. Uh, and he was alluding to a 32-back B Yoda that sold. And he said, I think I paid $550 for my ungraded Yoda back in April. And I felt like that was a fair price back then. And yeah, I would agree with that. Back in April, uh, the market was certainly a lot stronger. And, uh, you know, I, to, to me, that, that's probably about right for a high-grade 32B debut card for Yoda. And he says, seeing the slight price drop makes a lot of sense considering the belt tightening with many collectors. And that's a common refrain I've heard from a lot of folks, including myself, that, you know, there's a lot of warning signs out there for the economy and uh, people are starting to tighten their belts a little bit, maybe not spend as much. And uh, I, I'm in that boat as well. I'm, I'm certainly not buying willy nilly like I was maybe earlier this year. So uh, will that continue? Who knows? But it does seem like based on some of the recent sales prices for both mint on card, loose graded, loose complete figures that there has been a slight price drop. Has it been nearly as much as I expected by late October? No. Um, it seems like the prices have not dropped nearly as much as I expected, although there, there has been a slight decrease. So uh, it, I think that as we hit into uh, the later winter months, and maybe some of the economic indicators point towards a coming recession that uh, that belt tightening will continue. So that will be interesting. And tied to that, Rodney Webster, who's another Patreon supporter, he said exchange rates for you, for us foreigners is becoming more of a consideration. That's for sure. And it's been pretty unbelievable that the exchange rate changes over the last six months. And I've got some graphs here to kind of point to that. If you look at what the U.S. dollar has done versus the pound, the Great British pound, uh, it's pretty incredible. The U.S. dollar in the last six months has appreciated 16% versus the pound. And that is a gigantic number when you really think about it. In six months, to have 16% more buying power for us over here in the U.S., uh, for, for British items, so to speak, uh, the, the number of items that I'm seeing that are like UKG graded, that are for sale over in uh, eBay UK have become a lot more affordable, even accounting for for some of the sellers that use the global shipping program, where we all know that the shipping prices using the GSP are very, very expensive. But even accounting for that, the actual list price for a lot of these vintage items, specifically loose graded common figures uh, that uh, I've I'm, I'm been pretty shocked. I've got a PBP Chewbacca on the way fairly soon that I picked up for, including shipping now, it was a UKG 85% Spanish PVP circle on the bottom of the foot variant for Chewbacca. And it was a really nice brand new case and everything, including shipping, including the taxes that I've got to, state taxes I've got to pay. It was 84 bucks shipped, which is just a, an incredible deal when you think about it getting uh, shipped from the UK to me over here in the US. So that should be here soon. I'm sure I'll do an unboxing along with a couple of the loose graded figures I've got coming, but that, that's that's pretty incredible to see that price change. Uh, likewise, the dollar versus the euro. Uh, the dollar has appreciated almost 11% versus the euro, which is, just, that's that's an incredible thing. Now, you got to remember, like six to nine months ago, the dollar to the euro it used to be that for every dollar 10 uh, of U.S. dollars, that would buy you one euro. Now, it's almost even, if not a little bit to the advantage of the dollar so it's it's now it's less than a dollar you have to spend less than a dollar to get one euro and uh that's just a, a, an amazing change just in the last six months now is there a lot of economic 
uncertainty and recession going on in Europe right now. Obviously, uh, the UK is experiencing some financial turmoil. Uh, the prime minister just stepped down today as of the making of this video on October 20th after be only being on the job for six weeks. Yes, all that, all that is happening, and that's been uh, the big driver of the erosion of the pound versus the U.S. dollar. But, you know, the, the euro's erosion is really tied to what's going on in the Ukraine, the energy crisis there, uh, the, the inflation, obviously, that we're experiencing here in the U.S. as well. So all of those factors are kind of combining together to, to drive the U.S. dollar higher. We, we always talk about a flight to safety, a flight to quality, and I don't know how how much quality the U.S. dollar has right now with how much money the, the Fed is printing. But uh, it, it does seem like investors globally are flocking to the U.S. dollar, and it's driving up the, the, the value of the U.S. dollar. So uh, it's just it's just been a pretty incredible change. I mean, 16% for the pound and 10, almost 11% for the, uh, for the dollar versus the euro. That's, that's a pretty amazing uh, jump in just six months. Next up, FNU LNU says, great video and information. I think I've hit my VC collecting wall for the time being, but still good to keep up with the latest. And he says, sorry about the condo. That stinks. He's talking about my investment property condo that flooded. Hope everything gets squared away with that soon. So first on that, on the condo, yes, I, I think it will get squared away. It's not the end of the world. Uh, I do have a small YouTube channel called Home and Finance Now that's really just tied for work. And I documented some of the damage to that condo. It's been pretty uh, depressing to, to go through that process, but so far, anyway, the the built the the main building insurance policy is paid for drying out the flooding of the condo. They've cut out all the drywall and they've removed a bunch of stuff. So it's been, it's been a mess. But I do have my insurance involved, so it's just a lesson for anyone out there who has uh, investment properties that. You know, it doesn't matter how new it is. This is a brand new condo that was just built about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And even with that, you never know what can happen. And it's it's been a, a real mess, but I'm going to get through it. Uh, but going back to his first point here about the VC collecting wall, I want to hear from you guys who are watching this video. Are you guys hitting the vintage collection brick wall, so to speak, because of all the new releases, all of the pre-orders, and, uh, and obviously the prices have gone up for 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 the vintage collection as well. Just that's been Hasbro's big thing here. And I've got an article in a second here. Now, me personally, yes, I have hit the vintage collection brick wall and I can't keep up with all of the new releases or the pre-orders. And I've had to pick and choose what I like to, what I like to collect. I don't even remember the last time I pre-ordered any of these kind of pipeline items that, that have been released. Um, same with the retro collection. I don't really collect the retro collection, but obviously there's some 40th anniversary of return of the Jedi figures that, uh, only Juan Kenobi and Boss Bounty covered in great detail. They look great, but that's just not for me. But uh, but I, I wanted to show you this article, and thank you to several of you who sent me this article. I had not seen it, but I got this. Uh, I got a link to this article from several of you that sent it to me. So thanks to all of you who who did send it. And this is from Toy News International. I can include a link to this article uh, in the video description to this video because I, I think it's worth a read. But this just came out yesterday, October nineteenth. And Hasbro reported its Q3 earnings, which missed expectations and revenue. Uh, and uh, as a result, their, their stock got hit a little bit. And uh, their, their gaming sales, so their board games, things like that, th that has usually been one of their strongest segments. Uh, obviously, during the lockdowns and things like that, people needed games to play to, keep the, to occupy their time. Well, now that we're out of those lockdowns and people are starting to kind of try to get back to normal, their their gaming business was down 23% in Q3, which is a massive drop. So, uh, and as a result, their stock dropped just a little bit, 3%, which is not a huge drop, but something worth mentioning. But I wanted to cover a couple of things down here in the bottom that I, I think, as a whole, there are a lot of different factors that I think are driving people away from pre-ordering in mass with uh, the Vintage Collection specifically, and the Black Series. The Black Series is struggling even more, I would say, than the Vintage Collection. But uh, I, I think this this paragraph sums it up really nicely. It says, whether it be frustrations over a lack of product availability with long-time pre-order windows, continue rising costs, obviously Hasbro's raised prices, the windowless packaging for Black Series, that's a big driver, 
uh, continued exclusives to retailers like Walmart and Target who are constantly canceling people's pre-orders or shipping collectibles out in envelopes so they arrive in less than pristine condition. We're not going to rehash that argument. Obviously, that has been a long time concern. There is no doubt in my mind that a lot of collectors are unhappy with Hasbro these days. Me personally, I think that the vintage collection, the, the releases that they're, they're pushing out are awesome. Uh, lots of great new releases, whether the repaints or, you know, kind of cobbled together from different characters to make new figures or just totally re retooled characters. I do think that the Hasbro Vintage Collection offerings have been really nice, but some of these other negatives that I just mentioned are definitely driving uh, down collector purchases. And uh, as it relates to some of the crowdsourcing campaigns, especially with the Black Series, you had the Black Series Rancor HasLab that failed, the Riva lightsaber, which nobody wanted, uh, even in some of the all other toy lines like Marvel Legends, the engines of Engine of Vengeance has uh, has had a drop in backers since September 20th. Now it ends October 31st, but they actually have lost backers over the last month or so. And so th there's a lot of warning signs there that the adult collectible market, so to speak, not just Star Wars, but just generally uh, adult collectibles, people have other priorities as it relates to their discretionary income and a lot of their discretionary income bucket money is being taken out of that bucket and putting towards necessities like rent uh, mortgages groceries fuel things like that and uh, this is all stuff that we've talked about in the past so uh, I've, and the other big thing that i've talked about and hinted at in the past is that disney has pumped out a lot of content which is good for us as viewers uh, whether it's Andor, the Book of Boba Fett, we've got Obi-Wan Kenobi, Season 3 of The Mandalorian, on and on, Ahsoka. There's so much new content that they cannot keep up with figure releases to, uh, to, to, to satisfy adult collectors. And again, this was something that has covered, was covered at length in Tim's, in Boss Bounty's recent live stream with John Miko, is that, you know, they give us two and or figures. What are you going to do with that? Not much, right? So uh, again, it's there's a there's a glut of characters that have not been produced or announced for the vintage collection, and so as a result, you start to get kind of like a sprinkling that uh, people, you know, if you're going to do Andor, why give us two? Give us six. And but how do you do that? But also satisfying the finish the original '96 line, or how do you bring back some of the figures from? Uh, the Book of Boba Fett or Obi-Wan Kenobi that were missed. So there's just so much new content that it's almost impossible for Hasbro to keep up. And uh, and so that's that's the other thing. So uh, the, the other big thing I wanted to talk about from this article is I see big box retailers gobbling up more and more exclusives and putting more and more pressure on Hasbro to cater to them in order to effort in an effort to squeeze out smaller retailers or even to squeeze out the fan channels like uh, Dorkside Toys or Big Bad Toy Store, uh, it, and a lot of that, a lot of that could happen. I, I think that you know the the big box retailer retailers like Walmart and Target and Amazon, uh, they have a lot of power at, with with negotiating with Hasbro, and as they get more exclusives, somebody ha some some other retailer has to be left out, and uh, you know we're going to circle back to that as it relates to. Uh, the Clone Wars and the, the Walmart exclusive Havoc figure. But uh, I, I do find it interesting. His article was, for the most part, very negative in terms of his outlook for the adult collector who collects Star Wars action figures. He said, I, you know, I, don't, I don't have a good feeling about where we're headed uh, as an industry and as a collecting hobby because... Uh, there's just so many kind of negatives being associated with Hasbro. So again, I would encourage you to read the full article. It's a great article. And while it's maybe a little more negative than I feel about the vintage collection, it raises good points and all of those trends that are kind of coming together into a perfect storm where collectors will become disillusioned with collecting both the Black Series and the vintage collection. So uh, great point there by uh, FNU, LNU. And th there's definitely uh, some truth to the collecting wall for the vintage collection. And, and I know that I, I personally kind of, I feel the same way that I've, I've just been very, very much kind of on the sidelines at this point. I've got enough, so to speak, but there's a lot of other people that, uh, that 
certainly have still have a passion for it. They're going to collect everything and, and have at it if you got the funds to do it. Me personally, I don't. I don't have the funds to, to, to buy everything. Uh, next up, Wampa Slap. Guys, what is the country of origin on the Toxic Limbs Boss that we showed the trifecta in my live stream with Boss Bounty and Chris W. from Five Idiots Talking Toys? We had three different Toxic Limbs Boss on screen at the same time. It was collecting history that pretty much nobody else cared about except for me, Chris, and Tim. But some of you did enjoy seeing all three of those. Now, the country of origin is the Hong Kong. Uh, because it is the early Spanish POC version of Bost. And all of the early Spanish figures that were uh, assembled in the POC factory, the early, early Spanish figures, those all have Hong Kong COOs, countries of origin, because they imported the unfinished parts from the Hong Kong factories, and they then assembled and painted them in the POC factory. And as a result, the sonic welds are not very good. The paint apps are not very good. They can fall apart in your hand. I've seen lots of collectors show figures that have just fallen apart over the years because the sonic welds are not nearly as strong as those manufactured and actually finally assembled in the Hong Kong factories. Now, once the POC factory merged with the PBP factory, that is when they started actually producing their own molds and painting and assembling their own figures. They're a little bit higher quality, and those have usually the SCAR COO. And when you see a figure that says SCAR COO, that means it's a Spanish PVP figure. So uh, just keep that in mind. But yes, the, the Toxic Limbs Boss is a Hong Kong COO, but it is a Spanish POC figure. And that's how I would personally label it. Uh, UKG uh, labels those as Spanish POC. AFA still labels those as Kenner slash PVP. And I, I don't agree with that labeling. I think it should be Kenner slash POC because they are taking Kenner parts from the Hong Kong factory but they're assembling and painting them in the POC factory. PBP had nothing to do with these early Spanish figures because it was before the merger with the PBP company. So that's how I feel about it, but obviously AFA disagrees, and they still say Kenner slash PBP on their grading labels. But yeah, that, that's a good question and something I've covered in the past, but not recently. So for those of you who may be new to the channel, that gives you a, a very quick uh, kind of Cliff Notes version of the Spanish figures. Next up, Randy S. says, while traveling for work this week, I stopped at a collector shop that had a decent selection of vintage mint on cards. I looked through every one of them. Most of them were yellowed Return of the Jedi figures, and all of the figures that I was interested in had cracked bubbles. I've never seen so many figures with the yellow bubbles cracked. Well, this is a, a common refrain that I think you're going to see more and more moving forward because the U, especially the U.S. Kenner cards for the Return of the Jedi line as I've talked about at length in many market updates, <clears throat> those yellow very, very, uh, very easily, especially the 65 backs and later. So the 65 backs, the 77 backs, the 79 backs, and then the Power of the Force 92 backs. They all yellow very, very easily. And as I've talked about, once they yellow, that plastic turns to a different consistency. It's not nearly as durable, and they can crack extremely easily. So for those of you that do collect those later Return of the Jedi card backs and Power of the Force card backs, just be aware of that. Uh, figures that do not have the inner tray, so that figure is going to bounce around and jostle around in shipping to you. Uh, make sure when you buy one that you, you request that those figures be very carefully packed, ideally in a star case. But uh, some of those heavier figures like Anakin Skywalker from The Last 17, it's such a heavy figure that it can project right out of the blister during shipping. And it happens all the time. I see it all the time, even coming back from the grading companies. Uh, it's just a heavier figure than, than most of the figures. So just be really careful with those uh, yellowed blister Return of the Jedi's. If it's very heavily yellowed, like some of the Power of the Force 92 backs, uh, that, that can, I mean, you can barely touch it and it'll just crack. So uh, just be very careful. But that's a very common comment that I do get from folks. Riot Ninja says the Clone Wars 20th anniversary has me very hopeful for a, a few very needed figures in the vintage collection. And he specifically mentions Count Dooku, Captain Fordo, with his name on the card, Cad Bane. Next year should be fantastic. And I, I think that Dooku is almost a definite, it's, it's going to happen. I, I don't know about Captain Fordo just because we've already gotten the Art Trooper releases, both the animated Tartakovsky version. Uh, and, you know, just some other kind of art troopers from the fan channel exclusives that were like gaming greats. 
So maybe Captain Fordo, it, while it would be nice and it would be probably an easy repack and just, you know, renaming the packaging, uh, that could happen, I, I suppose, just because of how easy it would be for Hasbro to make it. Uh, but to me, Dooku and Cap Cad Bane are musts. Some of the others that I'd like to see, although I don't know if it'll happen, would be Asajj Ventress. I think an updated Asajj Ventress would be super hot. I would love to see her maybe in a more realistic kind of uh, figure mold instead of the animated style like this one here. But Asajj Ventress is almost a must, in, in my opinion. Uh, I, I would love to also see, obviously Hasbro's been doing these vintage collection multi-packs. It seems like a Mandalorian Warriors multi-pack is almost a given, uh, just given all of the different Mandalorian TVC releases we've had recently. Uh, repainting those and making them all kind of generic uh, Mandalorian Warriors as some sort of mail-away pack. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think that they've announced that, but that seems like that would sell like hotcakes and is probably a given to happen. Um, but I, I, those are some of the common ones. Now, for me, Cad Bane is a must. I don't know whether you'd put the Book of Boba Fett on the packaging or Clone Wars, but uh, I, I do think that Cad Bane is coming sooner rather than later. That's 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 probably a, a pretty easy one to do, uh, but uh, that's a great point. And I, me, for Havoc, I mean, Havoc looks cool and everything, but how many Clone Warriors, Warriors do I need? Uh, clone Troopers do I need? I, I, I just don't, I, I'm not going to order it because it is, uh, I believe, a Walmart exclusive, and I just don't mess with those anymore. Any of the store exclusives, I'd probably buy it on eBay if I really needed it. But I've got so many clones between those gaming greats and everything else. The animated style version that came out. Uh, I'm just kind of clone war, clone troopered out, so to speak. Tim Day says, some of the photos eBayers use and upload are so pathetic and annoying. Two blurred photos when they can use 12. That alone makes me want to not bid or buy. And that would be my recommendation, quite honestly. There's way too much out there for sale right now. And prices have leveled off a little bit such that you don't have to bid on some of these items where the seller is either uh, purposefully masking defects on some of these vintage card backs or they just don't know what they're doing. So I, me personally, I would never bid on something like that that has very blurry photos or doesn't very clearly show the, the true condition, especially when it relates to vintage Kenner items. If it's a mint on card and they show you two blurry photos, move on. I mean, there's just too much out there and, and too much available in terms of the population of these things that I, I don't even mess with it anymore. Unless, of course, it's a trusted seller that I know on Facebook and things like that. But uh, for me, eBay is just the Wild West. There's too much scum and villainy out there to, to waste my time with it. And, uh, and, and buyer beware right now. I mean, there's a lot of desperate sellers that maybe are casual collectors or have had these things sitting in a box in a 100-degree attic somewhere, and they, they just want to slap them on eBay and get whatever they can for them uh, to help pay the bills. And while there are good deals to be had, as I've talked about at length, and I've got another video coming up next week that details some auctions that sold for just insanely cheap prices, um, I, I, I would just be careful right now because uh, eBay is just full of a lot of that kind of stuff. Next up, we're, we're going to talk very briefly about the comic book market before we wrap up. Chris G says, your comic book videos are must-watch for me. Thank you so much, Chris, for watching. I really enjoy it. i uh, been taking advantage of the down market where I can. The Kanan, and he's talking about Kanan, the last Padawan series. Uh, those were high on my target list and have been acquired. So congratulations to Chris. And this is absolutely the truth. The Star Wars comic book market is dead in the water and prices are down 50 to 70% sometimes for some of these key issues. It seems like the market does not care about upcoming content whatsoever, even though, for example, going back to Kanan, that series of comics has the first appearance of the Rebels. And we know that the Rebels are coming to the Ahsoka series. Sabine Wren, uh, Ezra Bridger has been confirmed. I'm sure that Zeb Aurelius and Chopper uh, are coming. Eris and Dula is also heavily rumored to be coming. But the market does not care. It does, it does not care. And so uh, I wanted to just briefly show you just how much the market has fallen on some recent sales prices. Came in the last Padawan number one, which is the first cameo appearance of the Rebels team. That sold for 180 bucks the other day. This was a $350 to $375 comic. Now you can get it for under $200. That's just mind-blowing to me how, how far that's fallen for a really key book. And that's also the first full appearance of Kanan Jarrus, who's obviously dead by the time uh, the Ahsoka series timeline takes place. But that, that's just a great book to have. And to get it for under $200 is mind-blowing. 
the, the bigger book is obviously Kanan, The Last Padawan, number six. This is the first full appearance of the full Rebels team. And what a great cover it is. Ezra Bridger, Ara Syndulla, Sabine Wren, Chopper, Zebarilios. And, uh, you know, that one sold for $375 and change on October 16th. And you got to remember that this book hits six to seven hundred dollars, if not higher than that. And uh, again, the, the market just doesn't seem to care uh, between the comic book market as a whole really flattening out because of economic concerns, uh, combined with just general maybe fatigue with all of the new content that uh, these key books have, have really dropped in price. And if you've got some money to spend, now's a great time to get some of them. Likewise for the High Republic. We know that the High Republic is coming to both video games in theory as well as an animated style show, Star, as it's, uh, Star Wars Acolyte, I believe. I'm sure there's going to be live action content. The, the Marvel and, and Lucasfilm are really pushing this universe. And you can get the first appearance of Martian Rowe, the main villain within the High Republic universe, which is High Republic Adventures number two. Again, this book was over $150. This one just sold yesterday in an auction for $41 bucks plus shipping. So uh, pretty incredible just to see the drop. And uh, the 1 in 10 ratio variant sells for under $100, too, if, if you're lucky in an auction. So uh, just be on the lookout. And if you like those kind of books, the same with Mandalorian. The Mandalorian, number one, this is the Shelby variant. This sold for $37.56 yesterday in an auction. I mean, that is basically grading cost plus shipping to and from CGC plus the cost of the book. I mean, this is not much more above that. And to be able to get that in a 9.8 grade for under 40 bucks plus shipping is pretty incredible. Uh, likewise, the Mandalorian number two, this is the concept art variant. This sold for 42 bucks yesterday in an auction plus shipping. So there are some good deals to be had. Again, this is the first full appearance of Grogu and uh, Mandalorian number one is obviously the first full appearance of the Mandalorian and the first cameo of Grogu. So lots of good deals out there. If you've got the money, now's a great time to do it. But, you know, again, just wait for auctions for a lot of these things, because uh, especially with these modern comic books, there are uh, a lot of them. And the population report for 9.8s for a lot of these modern books is through the roof, because everyone thought they were going to make a killing on the Mandalorian and some of these others. And that's not been the case. The, the prices have come down, as I expected. And I think that they'll further come down into November and December. That's all I really had for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear your comments and I'll be back soon.